Stop it! Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Hello my brothers and sisters of The Order, welcome back to The Order, and today I'll be talking to you all about one of my newest type of equipment and gear, the Churchburg Gauntlet. Now, uh, I bought these, I believe it was, uh, let me see if I remember correctly, it was a Medieval Marshal, I believe, or something like that, and uh, this is from uh, oh, uh, Medieval Collectibles. Now, in truth, Medieval Collectibles sells these on their site, but as well so do other people. Now... Uh, this isn't going to be a major review for it, for one major reason, uh, kind of obvious. Uh, are they workable? Do they work perfectly to historical style gauntlets? Uh, yes, and also a no, for major reasons. Now, in truth, they look incredibly historically accurate. They're made from 16 gauge steel. They have the articulated design, which I do like. That way I can do my symbols and such, but the problem is, uh, it makes it kind of hard to do so. So I'll show you very soon what I mean. Uh, it also has the hourglass uh, cuff handle. Now, if none of y'all know what hourglass means, it means this design shape of the cuff, meaning I can easily have more movement for my hand. It can move around and such for the wrist. Now, I wish that was the same for the fingers, because... Uh, these are not very good for holding some said items. In fact, I can't even do my uh, taunts and such. Now, forgive me, any of my ladies and gentlemen, or any of my viewers, if you see some eh, quote unquote uh, uh, hate symbols, as people call it, or trolling me, or something like that. I don't know, or cursing design. You get my point. Because in truth, I'm just doing this to prove my point in the whole factual reason on how uh, movable these cuffs are. For example, let's try the British taunt. I can just barely do this, actually, because I'm holding my fingers up, but the uh, sadly, the uh, gauntlets aren't wanting to do that. So, yeah. The next would be the French model. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see that, but it, it, I have that as much high as I can. Uh, let's try the thumbs up, shall we? Because literally, I have my... I can't even push my thumb up because of this rail on the backing. Uh, another type of symbol would be the two uh, symbol like this. <laughs> or as well, one of the symbols t uh, is not exactly a taunt, but a curse. Would be this. Now, uh... Here in the United States, it's known as the rock symbol, but in truth, if you were to do this in the medieval age, you would technically were uh, uh, calling them a son of a devil or whatever, or uh, <clears throat> uh, I can't pronounce some of those words on YouTube, but yeah, you see my point. So, how good are these? Well, for historical accurate-wise, not so much. Now, in truth, it has a historical look. It has a historical feel. The problem is, it actually is not historically accurate to how it would have been manufactured. And as well, its movement is very bad. So I gotta deduct points from this. Because in truth, I was hoping this would have been an A+, but uh, this is more like a... B minus or C plus. So, uh, in truth, that's a really bad thing. So, yeah. Now, many of you might wonder, oh, but Templar, how would these th type of gauntlets like this be constructed? Well, one major reason, they wouldn't have actually been the way, as you can see, uh, the pieces aren't even attached to the glove. The only thing that is attached to the glove is the fingers, and that's it. And they would not have done it like that. They would have actually riveted or sewn the pieces of the fingers towards the glove. And in doing so, this would keep it completely articulated perfectly. And in doing so, the, well, glove would work. 
Now in doing so, that's actually where only parts of the glove would have been attached. Meaning it would have made it a lot easier to grip. In other words, the major attachments for the glove are all along this said glove area. For example, if we see these rivets here on the glove, that all symbolizes on where this would have been attached to the glove. So we do it so as y'all could see, the glove would have been attached with the rivets. The rivets would have been right on the glove. In doing so, this would have kept it moving. It wouldn't have well fall apart. And as well, uh, technically these are really impressive, yes, but the thing is they're not historically accurate. Which, martial historical, I'm sorry, but y'all got this extremely wrong when it comes out to making these. But it's not just martial historical, I also find out it's Lords of Battles, Topeka, uh, and pretty much everyone else because they don't do it historical accurate wise. Now, why is this? Well, that part I like to find out myself. But the thing is, the major reason, I believe, is because it costs a lot of money. But the thing is, this would be, it would be a lot cheaper and slightly more accurate to the form. Now, I get here many of you already. All but Templar, they need this small padding in the fingers to uh, keep for historical reenactment fights, and that way they don't break their knuckles. Well, yeah, but see, that's my point. Uh... In truth, you gotta get good historical accuracy for when you're gonna hold your weapon. Now, that actually brings me to another thing. Uh, the gloves themselves. Uh, they're made out of leather, which is not the best idea to hold a weapon with. Why do I say that? Kind of obvious. For example, I would normally go with something like this. This is uh, just a normal glove that of which I bought from Walmart a long time ago for my medieval kit. And actually, it works a lot more <laughs> And literally, I've actually done half swordings with a sharpened sword on this, and this thing still has not been cut. It still works. So in truth, I think they sh uh, If any of y'all are medieval gauntlet makers or whatever like that, like All Best or uh, uh, Lords of Battles, Topeka, Martial Historical, or anybody out there that makes medieval gauntlets, Please, for the love of God, use cloth. Do not, I repeat, do not use leather. Because it was a pain in the ass trying to even hold my greatsword with these. And that's saying something. Now, true, I do like the fact that these are articulated, but the thing is, they have to be historically accurate wise. Now, in truth, I can't even grip anything with this. Because, look, I can easily just grip the glove like so with this glove. But when it comes to this, it's kind of like a struggle, actually. So, yeah, in fact, I can't even tighten my hand around it to make a fist. So good, because it takes a lot of strength just to hold my grip in place for that good holding design. Now, uh, I wish that was the worst part of it, but the thing is, as you can see, I'm trying to do also a couple of fighting tactics with it. For example, the broadsword, uh, here's a major problem I don't, uh, because in truth, uh, the broadsword, as we understand, was used by medieval foot soldiers a long time, and in doing so, it technically is a really good weapon for a foot soldier. And yes, foot soldiers were able to buy and afford something like this. Though, uh, in truth, sometimes I'm actually told they would have not gone with articulated, they would have actually just gone with a full cuff design, so I might need to get something like that a little more, because I can see why, because this is a pain in the ass. Now in truth, if I was doing half sorting with these, then it would work. For example, in with my arming sword, it's a really impossible design on how I can hold it with one hand, but as soon as I start using two hands, I can easily move it about. The same can be said about my greatsword. The greatsword uh, had a problem because in truth every time I tried to make a sw slow motion swing I just felt literally I could feel the sword slipping out of my hand. Uh, which that's not a very good thing and the thing is I can't even do the Italian grip design with my uh, main finger, if none of you understand what the pistol grip is, or the Italian grip is, it's when you wrap your finger around the cross guard, giving you better and more control of the sword. 
which is kind of why I love uh, medieval late or uh, early medieval broadsword or late broadswords of the Dark Ages, because in truth they get more of the cross guard design on there. Now, another weapon I could probably actually put in this is also with the axe, the one-handed axe. Uh, here's a major problem. Now, in truth, actually, if I had a shield on me, of which this actually did happen a lot, uh, foot soldiers would have used shields a lot of times, same with medieval knights, especially. However, uh, sometimes, though, they would have actually had it attached to them, but the thing is, it would be around their neck, and they wouldn't actually be holding it. As you can see me, I'm holding the shield, but the thing is, I can't put it through the entire way because, well, this hourglass design causes the problem for me to hold. So, we could see the problem with that. So, yeah. Now, another thing also is the fact that the two-handed axe, uh, slightly, but the thing is, I get more control over it if I get more towards the end of a weapon, which doesn't exactly work out so well. But the thing is, if I have two hands, then it gets more control. Problem is, for that two-hand design system, it would pretty much be best with a halberd, a spear, or something. For example, I did this with my Warhammer, and it worked effectively enough with both one and two hands. The thing is, for one-handed, I had to get up closer towards the end of the weapon. Now, the spear, on the other hand, was slightly easier. And in truth, actually, I could probably see why, because my hand can easily wrap around it. Thing is, though, that's my problem. Most of the time, uh, when it comes down to it, some of these weapons would not exactly be that type of way. In fact, the Warhammer of none you understand, there are different designs of Warhammers out there. However, sometimes they have a square handle, sometimes they have a rounded handle, but most of the time people would rather prefer an oval-shaped handle, so that way you can easily have more control over it when you do a swing. But that gets me to my main point also with the medieval mace. Now, the mace somehow actually felt like it would work. Now, one reason why is because the uh, part of the guard for the mace actually got stuck right here in my cuff area, and it somehow managed to lock it in place when, every time I did a swing, especially if I was gripping it in a firm type of way, and it just, well, grips in there, which I kind of like that, actually, because it's holding it in place. Now, though... What would I actually say? Which weapons would probably work with these? Well, as I said, you might want to use two hands when it comes down to it. Problem is, I don't see two hands working with a broadsword. I don't see two hands working with a short sword. I don't see two hands mm, probably working with the great sword mostly, due to the fact that that's not exactly how they were used, but sometimes they were used that way. Uh, now, though, that's another thing I have to explain, though. Now, the Galaglass Greatsword, as many of y'all know, I bought. Uh, in truth, the Galaglass Warriors would actually have worn not two articulated hand grip designs. They would have actually taken what they could have uh, afforded at the time. Sometimes it would have been, uh, well, <laughs> this uh, articulated design finger design, or it would be the full cup design. Now, my best bet is the reason why they did this. In fact, some historians state that they would have actually had a articulated on the left hand and a full cuff on the right. Now, my best bet to that is actually because they were trying to get a good grip on their sword. They don't want the thing to fly out. So, they want a weapon that of which they can easily control. So, the cuff would actually be on their front while their articulated would actually be on their bottom. Now, I had a slight problem with this left one here. Uh, the leather stitching started coming off, off very soon, which I'm betting it got cut or somehow. So I had to stitch it back together. Which, I'd rather have this thing riveted to the glove than i rather, uh, well, anything else. Because literally, I got rivets on this thing that are attached to a separate piece of leather. Which, in truth, if we understand though, uh, it's this best to actually attach them to this glove here, and that will keep it, well, fully working. In which, all best, I hopefully hope y'all do that a little bit better, because, in truth, I want all best stuff to actually do something a little better than this. 
Now, I haven't bought from All Best since I got the Viking helmet, but I'm probably planning on doing probably this holiday, maybe. Eh, maybe. I'm a little iffy on that. So, yeah. But, now, many of you might actually wonder, Templar, would you use these? Uh, maybe. A big maybe. Because, in truth, uh, if I was a foot soldier sergeant, for example, like during the time of the Hundred Years' War, uh, if don't understand what a medieval foot soldier sergeant would have, or a medieval man-at-arms sergeant would have looked like, they would have been able to afford plate armor, they would have been able to afford mail and such, so uh, this depends on how much I can afford and such. So in truth, if I could afford these, yes, I would probably use this in a reenactment. Problem is, I would have to do several type of ways to fix this before I can get it to go better. And so, yeah, in fact, it might just be best you go to a blacksmith and such to make these historically accurate wise. And in fact, these are ac the glove size. And then you might say, oh, Templar, you got the wrong glove size. No, this is actually my correct glove size. Because literally, the glove size is the same as this. It says it's an 11, and technically that's like a large or extra large. So in truth, I got the correct glove size. It's the thing is, they did not do this correct when it came to manufacturing it. Which... Yeah, I do not like. Mm -hmm. That is just... <sighs> I want to say extremely horrible. Let's just leave it at that. So yeah. Now, in truth, what I could probably use this as, though, is probably a self-defense weapon. <laughs> just put it on my... Because uh... since I'm right-handed, what I could probably do is put it... Just take one and put it on my hand like so, and just punch somebody, because in truth, I feel like this can probably do some damage, especially if I punch someone with this extended knuckle guard, which, yeah, if you think about it, if I was to punch somebody like this, this could really break the skin and probably cause them to bleed, or as well, it could leave it a uh, mark in their bones for a massive time, <laughs> although, uh, one formal way I could probably see and use this is probably just do a bitch slap with it. <laughs> I'm sorry if I had to use a curse language, but to get to this point, point that would be pretty funny. Or, uh, if, uh, I wanted to challenge someone to a duel and say, Sir, you have dishonored me! <laughs> just do slap. <laughs> I could probably imagine that would probably piss someone off, but man, that would really hurt. Because the truth... Uh, metal on skin, as soon as you were to do, use an extreme amount of force, it would hurt like hell. And in fact, uh, it's even been stated that in medieval combat, when a person lost his weapon, for example, he had to sort to using his fists in order to fight back. Now, many of you might wonder, why would you do that? Well, kind of obvious. You lost your weapon, and you're technically wrestling on the ground, for example, and you're trying to pull out your weapon. In fact, uh, I think there was a movie called The King, which I hear is not that very historically accurate-wise, which I'm not surprised knowing that Netflix is now putting on the most dumbest things and the most pedophile things now on their site. I could probably see them losing millions of dollars already. So, yeah. But in truth, though, we saw uh, in the King film, they state that they were fighting and such, and they were wrestling, and in doing so, they had to sort to punching. Now, you can't exactly punch through steel, but the thing is, if you were to do this on a human being, like a foot soldier, and he has the kettle helm, and not a full visored helm and such, and you punch him right in the face, guess what? He's going to feel it right through his army cap and probably get knocked out. So, yeah, maybe it could work, maybe not. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, anyways, guys, hopefully y'all like this video, and hopefully y'all can probably find a better one than this, because I, I don't even know what the hell I'm going to do with this as a thing, because, in truth, I'm kind of worried about <laughs> I just wasted probably a bunch of money buying this damn thing when I probably should have not, because... I don't know why. I like articulated design like this, but... 
Yeah, you can see my point. In fact, I can't exactly, uh, as you all understand, I can't even, I can't exactly point correctly because it's like this one up, because it just wants to pull up my other finger when I do so. And when I do this, it looks like I'm pointing down exactly. Because uh, I can't do good job. I Because <laughs> if you do this in my uh, type of profession, it really does hurt a little. So, yeah. But hopefully y'all can get a better set. In fact, I'll leave links down below for some groups that make these historically accurate-wise with them attached to the glove. Because I'm not a big fan of this floating finger design. So, yeah, we can see the problem with that. Now, in truth, I hear many of you already. Oh, Templar, just get a new one, sell these off. Well, that's my first thought, but now I want to actually try and destroy these. See on how much resistance these things can take. And no, I'm not going to put my hand in it. I'm not stupid. Though, what I'll probably do is take, like, a fruit or something like that and put it right in the cuff area. So, we're going to see if it damages it. Or I'll probably put a raw hot dog right down the finger areas and probably uh, try and whack at them with a mace. And, no, I will not be trying swords on these. Kind of obvious. Because swords don't exactly go through plate armor. That's a myth that was conjured up by Hollywood for some idiot reason. Uh, I think they were listening to too much Victorian nonsense. But, yeah. Now, as I said, guys, please check out some other sites and such. But as well, make sure the things aren't, well, floating on here. In fact, Cult of Athena has more close-up uh, pictures on these. So if you see this major gap in the finger region and it's not attached to the glove, uh, that shows that you should not get it at all. Because, look, look at this. I can literally just fit my finger all the way through to technically my uh, third third finger, which that just shows that it's not a good thing. So yeah, I probably wasted a lot of money on this. Hmm. But yeah, let me get, let me show you all what I mean, because in truth, if I was to say take this uh, ramrod, like so, and just fit it all the way dang through, if I can, try and find it, yep, oh yeah, it's all the way back in there, because literally it's like, because <laughs> literally, you see the little ramrod sticking out? Here's the thing, it's right here actually, and literally, I can feel it right there, it's this... Because there's, because in truth, you don't get me wrong, I, I'm not exactly a plate armor guy, because uh, one major reason, it's kind of extremely hard to find plate armor today uh, that's historically accurate, because well, people don't look at, well, modern, they just look at it once and they don't understand it. Because look at this. Look at how the glove is is being held in place. It's being sewn on. It has these finger hole, these finger rings attached. And as well, it also has the grip ring. That's not how they would have looked. In truth, though, this design with the hand ring, or is known as the hand grip ring, uh, that would have been used in early style or fingerless design style cuffs. Now, many of you might want to, wait, there were fingerless design cuffs? Yes. These were without the thumb or the finger guards, and which, well, I don't even know if I can get a good example out of this like that. Uh, let me show you. Because in truth, they would technically look something like that. Now, I'm just putting my hand through here, but, uh, and no, I did not take the gl the part of the rivets out. I'm just holding them down like this, and which, uh, if I was to fit my hand through, it would actually just do that. Because, look, it would technically just stick out like that. 
Now that's actually really cool about it. Which, most of the time, infantrymen would have used something like that, not these. But, uh, I might end up doing a medieval knight armor, maybe, soon. Because uh, I'm kind of a little iffy on that, because there is a lot of time errors and such, so yeah. But anyways, uh, if you all want to buy these, do so at your own risk, but you're going to have to, well, take a regular, take out this leather glove, and as well, make sure that the, and just use a cloth style glove, so that way you don't lose grip of your weapon, and as well, you're going to have to make sure you have it riveted on the glove, and not this padded crap that's stuck to the damn thing, because in truth, that doesn't make it look good at all. So, yeah, anyways guys, this has been Templar, hopefully you like this video, click and subscribe, that glow button <laughs> icon and such, uh, and as well, as I said, also check out our Facebook, and as well, click the bell button, and as well, the like button, it's so that way you help the channel grow, and as well, also subscribe to actually help the channel grow, because we are actually hoping to get a lot of viewers and a lot of people interested in history, because in truth, I want people to understand history a lot, so... That's why I started this channel. So, in truth, hopefully some historians uh, and blacksmiths out there can probably fix this before it's too late. Because I can already see some people buying these and thinking these are actually what they would have looked like. This may be what they looked like, but this is not what they actually would have felt like. So, yeah. In other words, it looks <laughs> historical, but it's not. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.